Just what did you mean by that crack about the Earth being gone? Oh, well, I'm going to blow it up. It obstructs my view of Venus. Hello and welcome to the Comfort Fate Podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Rafi. Here with me today, two very special guests, two, two taller-than-me guests. That's really the only relating factor I have for you. I feel you like too. you can say that with every, ho- yeah. every guest. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I'm here with the all-new Ben. Hello. And the Invincible Connor. Ew. And, uh, guys, we're on episode three of this this brand new year for the Comic Buffet. Yeah, like, so when are you going to let me leave your house? He's kept me here. <laughs> He's kept me here, so. Yeah, Connor was in the last episode because he was in the basement. Um, so was Justin and all the other guests that I had planned for this year. Good sound muffling work. The screams didn't even show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we're three episodes in, we can afford to get a little bit weird. Um, so... The first episode we did was on Detective Comics, which we did with Connor over here. Yeah, Spooge Guy. Yeah, which if you like Batman, that's a book you can read. The second episode we had Bennett on, and you know, if you like Spider-Man, maybe you like Silk. If you're into horny teenagers. I don't know <laughs> if anyone in the world is going to want to read the book we're going to talk about today. Oh, God. Today we're talking about Martian Manhunter. Gross. And his 2015 12-issue series. He's like, he's like, origin story is kind of fucking boring. <laughs> that's the, that's kind of the overall problem with Martian Manhunter for a lot of people, is uh, he's kind of boring. Which sucks, because, like, when he is used well in, like, the Just League cartoon, or even, like, the Supergirl show, like, they do an okay, okay job with him. But the problem is, like, if you don't want to read Justice League, you're, you're just a Batman fan, you can read Batman. If you, want, if you like Superman from Justice League, you can read Superman books. If, you know, you like Martian Manhunter, you're shit out of luck. Because <laughs> there's a cycle with DC recently when it comes to Martian Manhunter. The cycle goes, we put him on a team because he's good on teams. And then that Just League book does really well. It's going up, it's going up, everyone loves that book. Hey, we're doing so well with this Just League book, let's give Martian Manhunter a 12-issue book. Right? Okay, here it is. It's new, it's different. we got to change everything about it because no one knows shit about Martian Manhunter. So everyone has to be on the same bar and be just as unaware of this character as we are making it out to be. So, new status quo, new book, let's go, it flopped, fuck, put him back on the team, he's not gonna get 12 shoes, that was stupid, that was stupid, fire the guy, fire the guy that gave him his own book, get him the hell out of here, take his shoes, get him the hell out of here, right, Give right, pink slip. he's out of here, and then they're like, hey, we're doing a new Just League book, you know who people like in the Just League, Martian Manhunter, huh, let's put him on there, he's supporting character, get that guy's brother, he's doing it in here, <laughs> He's doing well. He's on the Justice League now. That book's going up, up, up. Everyone's loving it. Hey, great idea. We we'll do some spinoff books, starting with Martian Manhunter, right? Twelve issue book. Get, he's put him out there. Brand new writer. Brand new status quo. We're doing new stuff, new designs. He looks so good. People are loving it. People love it. It flops. Fuck. Put him back on Justice League. <laughs> Fire that guy. Get him the hell out of here. What were you thinking? <laughs> Rehire his brother. <laughs> Rehire the other guy. Get the first guy. <laughs> get the other guy. Get him here. Put him on Red Hood. I don't know. Get, get, go. Get, get going. Something. <laughs> so lay him off. I don't know. This was one of the many attempts to make Martian Manhunter interesting again. And listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I like Martian Manhunter. I do not have the patience for reading all of his books. I think in the 90s he had like a 30-issue series. Oh. Good for him. That's the high bar he's going to have. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's your peak, Martian Manhunter. Maybe a show or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> his first movie appearance. It, you, the first time you see him in a movie, you're not going to a theater. You're sitting in front of a streaming app and watching a four-hour movie that is that is Justice League. <laughs> and he's not there until when? The, last the end. Minute. Last ten minutes. Or he's or secretly that general fuck. Yeah, he's secretly the general fuck who's a man of steel. Do anything. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> and his head's like three three sizes smaller than <laughs> an average person. He's like, I'm a perfect human replica. I look like a human. Why is everyone looking at me like that? I look like a Goomba from Super Mario Brothers the movie. Why is everyone looking at me? Um. See, the thing that... I don't have a lot of experience with him. My... My experience is like the old Justice League like animated series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he would be interesting if he didn't sound like the subway announcement services. Like, now arriving <laughs> on the red line. Like, he, he doesn't I talk above a monotone. I, I don't I, understand my emotions, Superman. He can shapeshift. Mm-hmm. He has psychic powers. He's almost as strong as Superman, almost as fast, almost as durable. There's not a lot of things that can kill him. Fire will kill him. Yeah, can't he phase through, like, walls and yep. shit, too? Yeah, he's got ghost powers, he's got psychic powers, he can shapeshift. 
in all in all sense, he's stronger than Superman because he can do all that stuff. But imagine, fire hurts him. Imagine someone goes to punch you and you just turn intangible and they just whiff it. <laughs> And then you just, like, backhand him the second you turn yourself <laughs> solid. Just, no. What I like is, so the Flash can do that. You know that. The Flash can, like, make himself phase through stuff. Mm -hmm. He has to keep the bottom of his feet solid. Otherwise, he'll go through the ground. That's fucking great. Yeah. I, think I would love that. There's a scene where Batman, in the comics, he's fighting Reverse Flash. And he's like, okay, Barry's going to be here in, like, a minute. So I have to survive this fight for a minute. And so he's fighting Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash is like, you're not the, you're just a dude, you're just a dude, and he's beaten up, and Batman's on the ground, he's like, oh wait, yeah, the stupid foot thing, and he stabs Reverse Flash's foot to the ground. <laughs> he's like, oh, I know it's about the foot thing. <laughs> Damn it. That's like, the, uh, side, <laughs> sidebar, that's the one thing I always see with Flash, is like, just go for his fucking legs. <laughs> that's that's the one, where all his powers like, come yeah, from. Like, yeah, he can punch fast, he can think fast, you shoot him in the ankle, <laughs> like, he's done for like, Okay, minutes. but Connor, let me give you a nightmare image. What? Flash, no legs. Crawling towards you really fast. <laughs> like a man. zombie. Or, yeah. or worse, he's doing a handstand. He's just <laughs> I can do this too, the fastest man alive. <laughs> oh my god. No, Barry, no. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the other thing. Yeah, so he's really powerful. His weakness is fire. For some reason, he has heat vision as a power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just imagine, like, he found that out the hard way, that he set himself on fire by accident. <laughs> yeah. It's like a cruel jest. Like, yeah, flame is bad, but you also have the ability to, like, make that. Yeah, it means he can't go to fire pits. He can't go to a hibachi restaurant. He's just, he's mad. He is permanently banned from Burning Man. Like, yeah. there is... <laughs> Burning Man. But yeah, Martian Manor has a bad habit of just, like, not, <coughs> not succeeding. Um, this was during an era called DCU, spelled Y-O-U. Um, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was post like New Fifty Two. Army recruitment. <laughs> it was after New Fifty Two, so they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Um, <laughs> DCU as a person. You, I see you. <laughs> I see you. Stop reading. trying to hide. Stop hiding. Uh, <laughs> Come buy this comic. I'll find you. I'll find you. Well, well the bro D I will broadcast your IP address. <laughs> <laughs> you buy my comics. I'll get you swatted. <laughs> yeah, swat. So the DCU initiative was they would have. They'd take, like, people's feedback from their books. That's never a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason they disabled the likes on YouTube. You never... Which know. also, like, they said that they did that, and then they, they totally didn't. Can't. <laughs> you can't. Because, <laughs> like, like, they're like, okay, it's DCU. We're, we're going to take feedback from these new books. All right, first idea. Bruce Wayne gets amnesia. And Jim Gordon, the cop that's his friend, becomes Batman. He's Batman. And he's in a robot suit. He might. And like Superman, right? People have their feedback. They want Superman one way or the other. What does DC do? Uh, he loses some of his powers and he wears like a t-shirt instead of like a costume. And it's like, who, who is, it, is it asking? Is it at least like a fancy t-shirt? Like the fake it is tuxedo? A, it, is, it is a t-shirt you could buy at fucking Spencer's. It is it's a blue t-shirt like with the Superman logo on it. Oh, it yes. It's crazy, right? Because I remember reading this when it came out. I remember wait, going Mars. down to the comic book store and everything. Oh, wait. Mars actually has a civilization and shit, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up. So, <laughs> it's complicated. Because every now and again, they're like, here's what... When I was first introduced to Martian Manhunter, he was the last Martian. The Martians were all dead because they were killed by the white Martians. Who are they? Give me a minute. Later I learned, oh, actually way back when, his origin was that he was just abducted from Mars and brought to Earth. And there are still Martians on Mars, but he just can't get back to Mars. Then it was a little bit of both. Then it was neither. And now it's going to be this. Because this story is about... So it's totally different than those two. Yes. Whatever you know about Martian Manhunter... Just dump wrong. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> run. You're, you've been wrong this whole time. Well, because I, from what I know, is that his family's dead by the white. He got killed by the white Martians. Uh -huh. He's the last Martian, and he was sent to Earth. And yeah. He's like, oh, my family. <laughs> I'm like Superman and Batman. It's so tough. <laughs> so the writer of this book is Rob Williams, who. I, I got so excited <laughs> for like the, the shortest <laughs> minutes I got. I was like, <gasps> And no, then you said no, it sucked no. and I got sad again. It's Rob Williams, and it's drawn by Eddie Barrows, who does the art for Detective Comics, which we went over. Here's the thing. When this was coming out, I was reading it, and then time had passed, and I had gotten rid of those issues at, like, a yard sale or something. Um, and I had to go back and reread it to do this episode. I did not remember, because I guess I dropped off the book at some point. <laughs> I did not remember how crazy this fucking gets. Uh, like, in a good way? 
So, so <laughs> Martian <laughs> Manhunter, right? <laughs> does not build confidence. Martian Manhunter, he, he needs a win. Because the original seven Justice League members, six of them succeed. Manhunter is the seventh member. And people don't remember that because it's like... Who, who, who Bro, I don't even remember like the other four. Well, this, okay, <laughs> let me put it to you this way, right? There's like a hawk somewhere in there. <laughs> there's a hawk. So there's a dude with like a ring he got from Spencer's. I don't remember. <laughs> so like Superman, everyone knows who that is. Batman, everyone knows who that is. Green Lantern had a movie. Wonder Woman, everyone knows who that is. We don't talk about the Green Lantern movie. The Flash, everyone knows who that is. Aquaman, for better or worse, everyone knows who that is. It's so so. Who's Martian Manhunter? <laughs> so so like yeah. So he's the seventh yeah. member of the team. And he's so obscure and overlooked and overpopulated by other more interesting characters that when they rebooted with the New 52, who did they replace him with? Cyborg. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's, that's rough. Yeah. But you're replaced by a Teen Titan. I mean, like, which it's an no upgrade. disrespect, I guess, but still. Like, it's an upgrade, but still, that kind of sucks. Yeah, like, good for Cyborg. Listen, I'm not knocking him. Good for him. He almost had a movie. <laughs> Good for him. We got closer than Martian Manhunter ever did. Um, like a cyborg movie would be tough. Like, how do you make IT support seem interesting? <laughs> <laughs> we have to. We sure. have to get into this. Okay. Because it's gonna be. It's gonna. I told Connor he was gonna get scared and confused. I'm already there. And then I told Bennett, "You're gonna love it. He's gonna get so scared and confused." <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, man. The last time I was here, we started talking about Jesus robots. <laughs> and you're, like, so, you're like, "This is fucking nuts!" I'm like, "How high does this? How high does this bar go?" <laughs> I don't want to overhype it, but yeah, it's pretty whack. Okay. Um, so the book opens with a plane crashing. Uh, as they, you know, they, as they crash. Uh, when they're not flying or sitting on the tarmac, they are usually <laughs> crashing. The wing was blown up by a terrorist bomb. Okay. And Marsh like, Manhunter happened to be nearby. Oh, was it like he catches it? So or did he just like watch it like impact? How sad! No, <laughs> if man, we that felt that, something about it, I would hope. But that wing's on fire. And I don't want to <laughs> so it's falling. He's flying over it, and he's trying to, like, lift it up. But uh, one of the weaknesses that's kind of on and off for, for John Jones, which is his actual name. That's why I kept thinking John Carter, because... Because <laughs> the little John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Wait. plane's crashing. He can't lift it, because there's a lot of psychic interference, because everyone on the plane's losing <laughs> their mind. <laughs> man, they're screaming really loud. Man. Can you guys <laughs> shut up? He needs a Magneto helmet. <laughs> yeah. That would work, probably. He goes in the plane, and he's like, uh, yeah, everyone sleep. And everyone goes to sleep. <laughs> I need. God, it's fucking quiet. And we're just passing <laughs> out. Except, except one old lady, and it's totally the scene from Captain Marvel where it's the old lady on the bus. Because it's one old lady, and she's not sleeping. And Marsha is like, "Um, you're supposed to be sleeping, ma'am." And she turns all white. She gets red eyes, and she's like, "Your time is over, Martian Manhunter. Your your use as a weapon has come, and Earth is going to die, and the White Martians are going to take over." Blah. What that that was, was their she... way to get his attention. Oh, they, must, they plane. must have been the terrorist then. Yeah. So I'm like, what are the chances? But like, what if like Superman random... showed up? <laughs> yeah, what are the odds? <laughs> Puts his hand through his face. <laughs> yeah, no, there's like a, like a carving over the top, and Aquaman hops in with his hook hand. He's like, <laughs> what's White happening? Like, Fuck! You're not. Oh, damn it! Oh, I'm in the air. <laughs> yeah. So the White Martian old lady is like, it's all over you. And Martian man is like, I bet. And then he like flies out of the plane <laughs> and. uh <laughs> Does he land it, or are they just staring at each other while he's trying to... <laughs> it all dies. We all die. No, he, he transforms into a dragon. What? Yeah, because he can shape John does? <laughs> yeah. Is he holding up a plane with his claws or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he turns into a big dragon. Why are you even... Why are you just open with that? <laughs> what the fuck? Every time he shapeshifts, it's like, whatever. It's just something you can do. When he shapeshifts in this, he's like... He like... He's in physical pain. I almost choked on him. <laughs> <laughs> he hurts. It hurts when he uses his power. He's like a fucking Fox X-Men character. Like it really, hurts when he does his thing. It's like a really bad stretching session. He's like, ah. I mean, granted, he's not just changing into a person. He's becoming a giant monster. He's turning into a monster. Okay. So, so he picks up the plane, lands it. Why does that suddenly make him strong enough? <laughs> because he's big you now. Like, doesn't he already have that strength? He has Maybe it's himself. the grip. Maybe it's the gripping. Like claw grip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little muscle mass. Granted, he could have just made his arms really big and wide, like big, like... Just, like, punctures a hole in the like bottom and all the fins fall out. Or big vines. <laughs> yeah, no. He could have done anything. He chose dragon. So, <laughs> always do dragon. It's like a can of nuts. It just punches a hole in it. It shakes all the way <laughs> So he lands, and he's all tired. He gets off the plane, and, like, a kid runs out of the plane. He's like, you saved us. And Manhunter looks up, and the kid's like, oh, 
You're a dragon. What's wrong with you? And man is like, no child, it's fine. And the kid's like, mommy, and runs away. And John's like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> just, this monotone voice. Man, this is my curse. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we cut to the psychic council, which is to say a bunch of white Martians are using like their mind forms to be in a room together. See, I... Are they actually there in person? It's a Zoom call, but with your psychic powers. Oh, okay. So they're talking. They need a council. To find yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're like, all right, it's time to enact our plan. We're going to use our terrorist attacks. Why do they just hate this one last Martian we're gonna so get, much? Well, that's the, that's the kicker, right? Because he's green. He's not white. <laughs> that's the kicker, right? They're like, all right, we're going to get John. We're going to get Martian Manhunter. And, uh, Dunk him in this bleach. It's gonna we're gonna everything. we're gonna use him like he was always meant to be used. Is that like a civil rights movement? With <laughs> no, <laughs> like a civil no. wrongs movement. Listen, They're terrorists. <laughs> Better writers, and I mean like Greg Wiseman watched like the four seasons, the four five, the first five episodes of Young Justice season four actually do interesting stuff with the Martians. And they make it a whole race race relation thing, and it's like no matter how advanced the Martians are from humans, they still have the same race issues that we do. It's great. Everyone else is like, white Martians are just evil. They're just evil genetically. <laughs> they're racist, but with goss weaponry. <laughs> like, so the white Martians are talking about how they're going to use Martian Manhunter as a weapon, as he was always meant to be. And you're reading it like, hey, wait a minute. I know a little bit about this guy. What do you mean it's designed to be a weapon? What? What? What do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? And into the psychic room. I, I don't know. Okay, so it's, it's a psychic room, room right? The, it's a psychic room. For some reason... They do that bit where a character's hiding in the shadows and walks out to, like, continue the conversation. Ah, that's what you don't understand. And it's like... The guy just unmutes You're all in the mindscape. You can't walk out of the shadows yeah. in the mindscape. Okay. That's like if you wore a disguise in the mindscape. That's so stupid. I'm my, hiding under a box I in your mind. I changed my avatar, guys. <laughs> I changed my avatar. <laughs> There's this red Martian named Malifaak. Malifaak? Wow. Malifaak. Mallory. So Malifaak is the only Martian Manhunter villain. I don't care if you're, like, the deepest, darkest Martian Manhunter fan. He's the only one that matters, right? He's been in cartoons. He's been in animated movies. When I met him, not, yeah. at, not at a cocktail party, he was Martian Manhunter's brother. Huh? Who was so jealous of Martian Manhunter. Because on his home planet, Martian Manhunter was essentially a cop. Malifaak was so jealous of his brother that he used his psychic powers to attack John's wife. And for his crimes the Martian Council took his psychic powers away and then made him forget that he ever did any of it. So, Malif How, so from, instead of being... Just does it again in physical yeah, person? Well, yeah. Instead of being jealous he, of, of John and everything, he's, like, jealous that John was born correctly because Malifaak had thought oh, that he was born realize without he's powers. Lost his powers. Oh. Yeah, which is, like, interesting. In this, he's just an evil red guy. You know, you, you would think a council of advanced alien race with mind powers would have the foresight to go... Maybe we should just, like, we, like, maybe he'll just continue to be jealous. What if we take away his psychic powers and also his ability to walk, talk, and, like, live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Red Guy is like, we're going to use the Martian Manhunter, like the weapon that I designed him to be, using blood magic. What? So, you can't have aliens. And then the White Martians are like... We're on, like, the third page. And it's <laughs> for real, up. for real, it's page <laughs> one. So, okay, I'll cut to the chase here. The, what the White Martians want is to use Martian Manhunter the way that they designed him, which we'll get to later, and the plan is to use the moon of Mars to destroy a portion of Earth. But Mars doesn't have a moon! <laughs> no, it does. It's called Phobos. They're going to kill Earth, which will revive Mars. It's like a blood magic trade thing. You kill everyone on Earth, you revive everyone on Mars. Oh, shit. Moon. They got, like, a couple. three moons. Lucky motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, we have one. What the hell? What the fuck? Yeah, we didn't even name it. It's just called the moon. Yeah. We suck. Um, we found it in 1877. <laughs> Look at there. A moon. People but, who, like, the first people saw that, they're like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Is it coming towards us? <laughs> so, so yeah, the plan is to use blood magic to destroy Earth and revive everyone on Mars. How come Mars gets three moons? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, how come Earth gets to live? They only have one shitty moon. So, exactly. So, like... So we're gonna use Mars moons, kill Earth, and that'll bring back Mars. And, like, Malifaak is like, now, in order for this plan to work, I need to fuse all of you white Martians into one guy. That's... And serious. they're sitting there like... What? And then he fuses Power them. Rangers book? <laughs> no, they become a mon... No, 
It's a Martian man in the book, so they all just, oh, no! And they all combine into the Martian man-eater. Hive mind. Man-eater. <laughs> so, that happens there. Um, there's a couple other characters in this book. Because, like, <laughs> in the beginning of this book, Marsh, Martian Manhunter's goal is like, okay, I saved the plane. Oh, there's a white Martian. Oh, my destiny is about to be fulfilled. I have to find a way to kill myself. So, Whoa. he goes to this scientist. So he's like, hey, kill me. Uh, and so he's looking around this lab, and there's a machine that'll kill him if he gets in it. And the doctor's like... Yeah, sorry, when you say there's a machine that kills him, it's just the suicide booth. From, from Futurama. Futurama. <laughs> Alright, here's a quarter. <laughs> the knife comes out, twists. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's like, alright, I'll get in this machine, and I'll kill myself. I mean, you know, there you go, ace of spades. And, he, and she's like, why do you want to kill yourself? He's like, because if I live, Earth will die. She's like, okay, can you explain it? Um, <laughs> that, that is a... That, that. That's above her pay grade. She should have been like, all right, cool, get in. <laughs> and that's uh, that's when the win. wish. That's when the Just League shows up because they've Ooh, already started. They do. They've already started putting it together. They're like, hey, no, John, don't do it, John. You're like you're like connected to all these. Start writing him letters. <laughs> <laughs> they they know that John is connected to all these terrorist attacks. They're not blaming him, but they know that he knows something. <laughs> they don't do shit Quick, about it. Quick, sign this life insurance policy before you go. And like they've been trying to call him about it, and he's been like. Message to client. Do they need to blow up a plane? It's gone to straight to voicemail. <laughs> yeah, he's on a phone. You just blow up a plane. That's that's how you get his attention. It's his smoke signal. So, the Just League show up, and the Just League at this point is like Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, The Flash, and Cyborg. But because we're in the DCU era, um, Flash is normal. Flash is whatever. Everyone likes Flash. What, is he like on like a Segway? No, he's cool. He's just, he's just the same you remember him as. Whatever Barry Allen is in your brain, that's him. Um, oh, but he's still gonna run. So, oh, he's gonna run already. Uh, Cyborg. You said he was normal. I was like, "What do you mean?" Cyborg's a bit more advanced. He can like create any kind of technology from his body. He's on <laughs> Linux now. <laughs> he's like a cartoon cyborg. He's like Teen Titans Go cyborg. He has everything and anything in his body. Okay. He's got a waffle maker. He's got a there. waffle maker in his body. He can make waffles now. Then Wonder Woman has like more clothing. Oh, fuck! I hate this book. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the DCU initiative with Wonder Woman. All right. Superman has less powers. Batman's replaced by Jim Gordon. Wonder Woman, ah, oh, she gets a new fucking costume. Please. Cyborg has new powers. Like, <laughs> god damn it. And they, the four of them show up and Superman's like, hey, John, we need to talk. He's got the like, grease stains on his shirt. <laughs> he, does like, ride, he does ride a motorcycle. <laughs> because he can't fly anymore. It's just like, what do you mean he can't fly anymore? <laughs> Superman's like, don't kill yourself. And John's like, it's just in a wheelchair. You can't stop me. <laughs> He jumps in. So Martian Man has to fight the Justice League. That's so stupid. Which he should just be like, well, yeah, fight, fight me and kill me. Do it! Nerf <laughs> Do it! To fucking, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He turns into a big monster and he's like, go on, Diana, fight me. You Starts fight monsters. flattering her. <laughs> you fight monsters, don't you? I'm a monster. Go on, fight me. Go on. Rah! And then he's fighting Flash and his head is like, the Flash has the power of a god in his fingertips. And he's fighting Cyborg. It's like, Cyborg can create anything he can imagine. He's truly... Uh, the pinnacle of human design, and all I am is a weapon, a monster. <laughs> it's just a melodramatic it's just Superman. Bullshit. He's got a cool motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he rides a motorcycle. <laughs> His t-shirt has a stain on it. <laughs> Batman, he's so cool. He's not even here for this. It's a good catch. Um, <laughs> yeah, Batman, just give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. So just like you're fighting the Martian Manhunter, Superman like comes back into the fight, and when he walks outside, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Flash are just standing there in awe. And, and what, did, what did he turn into? And Superman, it's like. Diana, what's wrong? And she's like, this battle, Clark, it's it's so epic. It's good. It's it's the hardest fight I've ever fought before. And he's like, fuck, he's in their brains. He's making them think that they're fighting him. Where did he go? And <laughs> he's just crawling back into the machine. <laughs> he is. He's in the machine. He's like, I'm sorry, Clark. Oh, he pulls the train. Kills himself. What the f- that's the old thing. <laughs> and that's issue one. So you're like, what is the rest of this book going to be? The dude killed himself. <laughs> We're also introduced to this character. His name is Mr. Biscuits. I already think this is a cat. I haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> if this isn't a cat... It's not a cat. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like a shrimp. <laughs> it's like a cricket. <laughs> it's like a cricket, man. So when Mr. we meet Biscuits. Mr. Biscuits, he's sitting alone in an abandoned building. That's not okay. Uh, yeah, I could expect that. <laughs> And peeking on him through, like, you know, some boards in the windows are, like, a group of, like, five <laughs> kids. Five, like, eight to twelve-year-old kids. He's watching them or they're watching him? They're watching him because he's sleeping. And that. fucking ugly. <laughs> fucking ugly. And It's terminal. He's ugly. 
<laughs> and he's he's got a sign that says uh, "Wake only in case of emergency." I would I would just let the world end. I, I, I <laughs> burn the house down. Burn so the, I with him inside. He must have been in this building for a while, and he must have talked to one of them before because they know his name is Mister Biscuits, and that he and they know he likes like. Biscuits? Cookies, cookies and biscuits okay. and such, crumpets, letting all sorts of pastries. So one of the little one of the little kids is this little black girl named Alicia, and she has a bag full of treats. And so she walks in. He's like, "I have some biscuits for you," and he uses his psychic powers to draw her in closer. No, nope. <laughs> fucking creep. It's like force choke brings her. <laughs> and over then the biscuits <laughs> and relinquish then, the biscuits. And then, much like Venom, he gets like a long tongue that comes out and like snacks some of the biscuits out of the bag. He's like, yes, these will do. What a fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, and then he's also like, he starts freaking out. <laughs> and then she's like, what's wrong? Oatmeal cookie? <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves oatmeal cookies. Oh, goddamn. Was it laced with like LSD? Or <laughs> no, no, no. He starts that freaking out. Is... Uh, Alicia is like, what's wrong, Mr. Biscuits? And he's like, I have to get somewhere. Things are happening, and I have to get somewhere. And then she's like, "We'll take you to the air. We'll take you to the hospital." <laughs> I need the airport, you dumb biscuit delivery person. <laughs> I need to go to the hospital. And they're like, "Well, okay, that, that lines we'll up." Take you to Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> you belong here. <laughs> so they're going there. At the same time, we meet uh, what's what's his name, Daryl Wessel. Oh, isn't that like a. Walking Dead character or some shit. Daryl. Daryl <laughs> Wessel just sounds like a retired NASCAR driver. <laughs> Daryl Wessel is an African American FBI agent who's like you know on the he's like he's on the beat he's on a case right now, which as, is just, as they do yeah, yeah yeah. There's this kid. Uh, I guess I didn't write down his name, but there's this kid. They caught him with an ounce of marijuana. <laughs> now they're sending him to federal prison. There's this kid who uh, choked and killed. His legal guardian. The kid couldn't have killed his legal guardian because he's paralyzed from the neck down. He's in a wheelchair. Okay. And, and Daryl is like, all right, let me go talk to the kid. And the kid is like Hannibal Lecter. He's like, I, I did it. I killed her. I killed my, my guardian and I'll do it again. I, I did. This and he also has a reverse like robotic arms coming out of the fucking... <laughs> no, he's creepy. Dog. He's creepy. He's asking a bunch of questions about Daryl's life. And he kind of implies that Daryl doesn't know things about his own existence. And Daryl, Daryl should be like, okay, kid, whatever. Yeah. But he's like, what do you know? <laughs> what the fuck? What a shitty FBI agent. <laughs> so, goes to one crime Such a fragile <laughs> ego. <laughs> questions his existence. So Daryl is with this kid all the way to the hospital. Because they take the body to the morgue at the hospital. And they take this kid to a hospital yeah. room. And it's weird because it gets like personal. He's like, tell me, Daryl, do you have like family... When's the last time you saw your family? I feel like he's an FBI agent. Why would you, you answer? Be, yeah. yeah, like, you shouldn't be influenced he, he, he by When's the last kid. time you called your mother? Like, <laughs> well, eventually, <laughs> eventually he gets to Daryl, because Daryl's like, he calls the other FBI guys, he's like, I need a swap out, this kid's driving me crazy. And they're like, alright, cool, you can leave you the room. shut up about NFTs, <laughs> this shit's crazy. <laughs> they're the future. Something about a blockchain? I don't know. <laughs> so, Daryl's gonna walk out, and the kid's like... <laughs> tell me, Daryl. What you, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you? I got nothing to tell you. He doesn't he <laughs> reach his arm out. <laughs> no, no, he's like, wait, wait, come back. <laughs> no, no, I can back for it. He's like, listen, Daryl. My legal guardian was an alien. And Daryl's... Dar who is this bitch? Daryl, Daryl should be like, okay, kid, whatever. But he's like, what do you know? <laughs> it's just... It's in the X-Files thing. <laughs> and the kid is like, Daryl, go down to the morgue. Set her body on fire. <laughs> and all will be oh, revealed. All he does is convince this dude to get rid of the evidence. <laughs> and he's like, you idiot, now I'm scot-free. <laughs> you'll never find the wheel yeah, you'll tracks go to jail now. For <laughs> so, Daryl goes down to the morgue. Oh my God. And he's like... <laughs> her, body. her body turns into a Martian. She's a white Martian. Does he put the fire out to prove that he wasn't No, insane? he runs out. Well, he's, he just lets it burn. He's like, man, there's going to be evidence of a fire, but I'm not going to tell him what happened. He's starting to freak out. So he goes back up to the room to see the kid. He's like, the white why? No, 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 but Daryl. Because the white Martian's a dead body. Okay. He let it on fire and turns back into a white Martian. Still dead. Okay. Let's How did the kid way. kill it? Daryl goes back up to the room. He's like, so you're right about it being an alien. 
Uh, what do you know? What's going on with you? Are you connected to anything? Who do you I work for? Who do you work for? Tell me, your kid. Just pulls out like a gun. <laughs> the other FBI agents come in, and the kid is like, "You can't trust them, Daryl. They're with them." And and the, Daryl's like, "Huh?" Looks back. The FBI agents turn into white Martians with like big scary claws and like long jaw Did mouths. They do that? Ah! Yeah, they're yeah, we're monsters. <laughs> the jig's up, to folks. Do that. They could have just been like, "What do you, the fuck you mean?" Yeah, you're listening to that kid. You don't know yeah. him. <laughs> You know us. <coughs> I've been your partner for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> you were at my house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> You're the godfather of my child. <laughs> Daryl, we went bowling. That meant a lot to me. We're in a league together. And Daryl's like, it's all been a lie. Takes the kid, runs out. Like, he doesn't even take the electric, just scoops him out of the chair and runs. <laughs> he does. He runs and he throws the kid in the back of an ambulance. Um, Steals throws? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm commandeering this. Doesn't he won't feel it. In, like, the <laughs> lobby when the White Martians are freaking out and going crazy. That's when Mr. Biscuits and the kids show up. And cops start firing because they see Mr. Biscuits. I would shoot at that, too. And, like, the to White Martians, the FBI guys, they're only slightly turning into White Martians. I should say that. Like, they still have human faces. But they're kind of like... Oh, the claws. Like, yeah, like they grow. Stretching. They get a little smaller. It's like when it's convenient to them, they look like people. Uh, so the cops are more... The security guards are more interested in this Mr. Biscuit's character. Oh, what the hell is that? And just like... <laughs> <laughs> and, the, uh, and the kids... The kids are like, fuck this. And they run off. We're going home. We're like... Little Timmy gets like grazed in the leg. He's like, ah! Oh, we're I'm ten. Good. We're going to go home and play Roblox. This is over. I'm going to go bug my parents for Robux. But Alicia stays. Alicia stays with Mr. Biscuits. And the two of them get onto the ambulance that Daryl's driving away. And Daryl is like, who are you? And she's like, I'm Alicia. And this is my friend Mr. Biscuits. How Hello! Old, isn't Asian, how old do you say she was? Like five? She's like nine or ten. Oh my god. Yeah. She should not be caught up in all this. Mr. Biscuits, Daryl, and the kid in the backseat are clearly all connected in some way. Now, I know that's a couple characters. To work. We introduce a new character. Oh, great. This one is uh, Mrs. Truffle. She calls herself the Pearl. What the fuck? What these fucking names. She lives in Dubai, and she's, no. a, she's a master thief. No. She wears like a white morph suit and stuff. Like, it's the whole thing. So she's like on this windowsill, and inside is like this rich arist aristocrat. That's a tough word. A rich dude. And. A noble. And she's like watching this dude so that he can she can like rob his his apartment or his penthouse or whatever. Stakeout, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's watching, and then this FBI guy walks into the room, and she's like, "Huh, who's this guy?" And like she's narrating this whole time. She like when the dude's in the room alone, she's like, uh, "What will I do next?" Oh, with she's all like my... questioning. You mean? No, not questioning. She's like mocking him from behind the glass while she's watching him. She's like, huh, "What am I gonna do with all my money next? Maybe I'll buy a small country, or maybe I'll purchase oh, did a she, building." Did he hear her? No, no. no. He can't hear her. He, she's just doing this for her own entertainment. Oh, okay. So she's making fun of him. FBI agent walks in the room, and she's like, ooh, here's my FBI friend. Maybe together we'll kill a bunch of people and then pay, pay off other people to keep quiet. And then the FBI agent turns into a white Martian and kills that rich dude. And his blood splatters over the window. And uh -huh. Pearl's watching the whole time. And then the white Martian <laughs> wipes it and gives her this little grin. And she's like, hell no. And she gets out of there. You were going to steal from this guy, and the police will never believe you. <laughs> She's on the run from these white Martians. She's, like, on the docks, and she has to make this really long jump to escape. A jump that would kill her. What Martian Manhunter shows up as a ghost. In her head. And he's like, jump. Do it, you'll survive. No, do it, do it. I, 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 I know I'm dead, but trust me, you'll live. Uh, you've never met me, but, uh, jump. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like... Okay! And she jumps. Oh my god. And she It's like seven stories or something. What the <laughs> fuck? So she lands on her two feet, and she's fine. Doesn't break anything? No. Manhunter <laughs> guides Pearl. Like, it's a freaking stealth mission in the video game. Pearl. <laughs> guides Pearl onto this ship, and she stays on the ship for like a day, as it's making its voyage. To where? Is it Dubai landlocked? And then the Martian Manhunter is like, alright, stop here, get off the boat. And she's like, it's the ocean! He's like, no, no, you'll be fine. You don't need the breather or anything. Just, just jump in the water. There's an island like 20 kilometers that way. Pearl, Pearl tries to swim to this island and she drowns. We're gonna get. <laughs> oh my god! Don't worry, you'll be fine. Fucking. Die. Where's Aquaman? <laughs> he was just wait one moment. When they're when they're in the ambulance, the Martian man eater shows up. The big collaboration yeah. of white Martians. 
And they're like, rrr, 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 they're running after him. <laughs> Chasing after the ambulance. And, and Mr. Biscuits is like, I'll fight them. His cane is like one of those staffs that separates into three segments. And he starts doing oh, judo on them. Oh, he's like a linked staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the Martian oh. Man Eater is like, just a fucking shotgun. Chop in half. Does he really? Yeah, so Mr. Biscuit is chopped, like, like from the legs and the top half off, like, separate. Oh, straight up horizontal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Daryl is like, Alicia, <laughs> you drive. And she's like, I can't reach the pedals. And he gets out of the ambulance. He gets onto the top of the... <laughs> gets the top of the ambulance. He starts shooting yeah, at it. Yeah, the <laughs> In the back. Just <laughs> <laughs> the gun's knocked out of his hands, and like... From what? The man-eater? Yeah, he slaps it out of his hands. He got that close? Yeah. The man-eater's really? like, right behind the ambulance. Blah, 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 blah. Like, right behind it. It's like a video game fight. It never loses track of where you're going. So, um, Daryl's fighting the, the man-eater, and he's like, what do I do? I don't have my gun. <laughs> and the man-eater's also, like, psychically fucking with him. Your parents never loved you. <laughs> what do you know? But then Daryl hears the voice of Martian Manhunter, and he's like, fight him. Pull the e-brake. <laughs> it's like, him. yeah. Fight him. He's like, Martian Manhunter's like right over his shoulder, like, do it, get him. Fuck him up. It's like, how? Don't worry, I didn't just kill a girl by drowning. <laughs> <you. laughs> Daryl's gonna kick your ass, right, Daryl? Get him, Daryl. The kid with no fucking, like, he's probably got a neck brace What about the kid that him. killed one Martian? Why isn't he helping? Why isn't he helping? This guy's got, like, at least one more kill than you. Go get him, Daryl. <laughs> Martian Man is just like, alright, Daryl. Uh, just, just, like, <laughs> just punch it. Just fucking punch Just hit it. Just hit it, Daryl. So Daryl's like... with your wheelchair, like... <laughs> so Daryl's like, I, I can do this all day, and he punches the Martian Maneater, sending it flying Fucking backwards. <laughs> oh my god. Like he has super strength. Mr. Biscuits, Alicia, Daryl, and the kid in the wheelchair all get to the, host, uh, the, the, air, the airport, and they put Mr. Biscuits' body in two big trash bags and just lug them around everywhere. Why are they taking the body with them? I'm gonna re-sew them. <laughs> around this time, Pearl... Uh, you know, she drowns. But she's saved. She wakes up on the island. By Aquaman. Like, she's rescued by Aquaman. Of course. Her lungs are, like, filled with water at this Who, point. because it's DCU, um, he gets kicked out of his position as King of Atlantis. Um, you don't just get kicked out as <laughs> king. Yeah, no, he gets kicked out. Mera takes over. But secretly, it's Mera's evil sister. Because, fuck it, it's comic books. Um, and his new costume is, like, he's got the green pants. He's got kind of, like, a yellow frill to the pants. And then, like, a gray, like... Like sleeveless top, like a gray armor plate. Yeah, yeah that's not. We most, can't. Okay, most kings, <laughs> most kings would be like, "You're gonna overthrow me? The fuck you are!" And would like murder you. <laughs> so Aquaman, but he's like, "Yeah, I wanted to break anyway." Aquaman saves Pearl and brings her up to this beach. He's like depressed. He's like, "Oh." <laughs> and, and on the beach, they meet I, I, mold. It's M O U L D, but I think it's pronounced mold. Sounds French. Mold. He's an old man. <laughs> He's this old guy with like white hair. God, are any of these supporting characters fucking useful? So, <laughs> so mold is like, all right, it's like issue six. We're gonna get to it, right? This is the twist where you're like, okay, well, this is the twist. This is the twist. <laughs> okay. This is the part where Raffi back in 2015 was like, oh, this is a good book. I'm liking it now. Mold, Daryl. Pearl and Mr. Biscuits are all pieces of Martian Manhunter. At some point in time, Martian Manhunter divided himself into five people. Himself and these four characters. You don't think he would have gathered those up so he could kill himself? No, he separated them. Because he knew one day the White Martians would come after him <laughs> to fulfill his true purpose. So he wanted to make himself harder to find. But for some reason... His parts are being brought back to <coughs> together because they're connected. It's like in the wake of his death, they have to come back together. Goddamn horror cruxes, okay. Yes, and they all represent a different part of him. So, uh, here we go. Who the fuck was Mr. Biscuits then? <laughs> Who was that? Uh, his maturity and self control. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Daryl is like the hunter of Martian Manhunter because he's a cop. Or an FBI, okay. whatever. That's his job. So he, he's that's what he does. That's like he I I have I have to do justice. So I'm the world's greatest detective. Your parents didn't like you. Oh my god. <laughs> Pearl is Marsha Manhunter's heart. Ew. She's a thief. 
<laughs> Give me that. I have a heart, which means good morals. No, I, just, I steal stuff. I have a heart of gold, which I stole from a candy, <laughs> from an orphan. Um, uh, Violently stole from an orphan. Mold is Martian Manhunter's head, which is to say, like, his, like, uh, his, his mind, I guess, which is why he knows that the most. That man is so old. So he's so old. Because Martian Manhunter's old. He's an old dude. Fucking like 15 mold years. does not yeah. look sane. No. Who the fuck mold? Okay. And Mr. Biscuits. It's like his fucking. It's his subconscious. Oh. What the hell? Because somehow it's like Mr. Biscuits. Genitalia. Mr. Biscuits thing is like I just want to eat biscuits and like hang out. <laughs> what is Martian Manhunter doing? Martian Man. I am so cool. <laughs> also, my subconscious ninety percent of the time. <laughs> okay. Biscuits. So here's here's the whole inspiration behind Mr. Biscuits. In the nineteen nineties. They when do. the Justice League was at its, like... There's the first issue. <laughs> <laughs> in, like, the early 90s, the Justice League was kind of more of a comedic book. And it was a lot of... It was, like, Booster Gold was there, Blue Beetle was there. Oh, like, it was, it was a comedic Justice League. Martian Manhunter was on that team. And in that book, they establish he loves Oreos. In the same way a crack whore loves crack. So, he... They have to limit him, kind of. <laughs> Like, they can't let him have too many Oreos because he'll just stay inside and eat them all. Just get fat. Yeah, because he's, he's an alien. So he likes cookies way too much. But if they, they take... don't Martian cookies. If they give... If he has too much, he's not going to do anything for the team. That's if funny. he doesn't have enough, he's going to attack his teammates and accuse them of taking his Oreos. Now, for legal reasons... For legal reasons, they had to change Oreos. They couldn't it's call them that anymore. Biscuits. No, to Chocos. So Mr. Biscuits likes... Biscuits, cookies, pastries, because of that thing from the or from the nineties with the Oreos. Now, as far that's as that's too vague of a throwback. <laughs> as far as that is not, I, I know that's the reasoning, <laughs> but it shouldn't be. As far as his purpose, it's supposed to be that he acts like this silly weirdo character, but in the back of his mind, he knows how things are supposed to be, and he's like. Over the course of the book, he's like, we need to go here. We need to do this. We're connected. And he's like, I don't know how, but we are. Ew. So the four of them are really important. And Mold, okay, some of them disagree about what their purpose is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because Mold is like, all right, so uh, the moon of Mars, Phobos, it's going to shoot a laser out of it. And it's going to hit Earth, and it's going to make a hole as here. As moons do. Yeah, as they do. <laughs> That's all moons will do one day. Um, and it's going to shoot a hole here, and we're going to jump into the hole. And Pearl is like, she's, she's learning all this, just like we are. And she's like, that's stupid. I'm a thief <laughs> from Dubai. I remember having a family and like growing up. These are all inserted memories, by the way. She's like, that, this is my Her whole life. life's a lie. Her whole life's a lie. <laughs> life it's like Eternals life. now. This so. book is so fucked. <laughs> oh, by the way, Aquaman's like, hey, so I, I don't, I guess you guys are Martian Manhunter. Can, can I leave? Because Martian Man, like Mold had used his powers to... Like summon uh, Aquaman here to save Pearl, and Pearl, before she learned, like she's like processing all this stuff, but she's like hitting on Aquaman, and Aquaman. Why? Pearl, He's not even a king anymore. It's <laughs> nothing <laughs> offer. What are you <laughs> offer. You ain't paying my bills. I'm man. getting half that kingdom. <laughs> so sand dollars don't mean shit up here, honey. <laughs> so, so so Pearl, so Pearl's hitting on Aquaman. And Aquaman's like, yeah, so me and John were friends, so I don't really feel comfortable doing this. Goodbye. And he goes in the ocean. So Mr. Biscuits used his psychic powers to make everyone in the airport not freak out that a man in two body bags is being carried around. Um, so the four of them get through airport security. I was about to say, out of all the... Wait, is he still half? Yeah. PSA is just like... They do put him back together. They put him in the airport bathroom and he... He puts himself back together. Okay. Yeah. Slide like, the car to, be, to be fair. And he's, again, because of this book, he's screaming in pain as he's putting himself back together. And Daryl is in front of the men's bathroom blocking it off. And all these people are in front in line. They're like, hey, is your buddy okay? He's like, yeah, no, he's fine. Just, he's just, he's, oh, there's a shit ton of blood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And Darryl's, a fucking cricket walking. <laughs> Daryl's like, my friend just had some bad seafood. And you can hear Mr. Biz it's, oh, the pain. Okay, I think that's the worst of it. No, wait. Oh. <laughs> To be fair, that's there's some weird shit that happens in airport bathrooms. <laughs> so they're like, okay, we're gonna get on this plane, we're gonna fly to this island, and they and we know we have to go there. We're gonna hijack the plane. <laughs> but they also know it has to be Mr. Biscuits, Daryl, and this kid. Because they think they think the kid is connected to Marshman in the same way that they are. Like like they think he's a piece of him. And what the one in the wheelchair? The, yeah, the kid in the wheelchair. What did it be not? It's gonna be so funny. <laughs> Mr. Biscuits is like, Alicia, stay at the airport. That's fair. 
They still have that 10 year old kid. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh I, my I, fucking. Yeah, Mr. Mrs. Can grows. Can I just have cab fare to go home? No. <laughs> Mr. Mrs. grows a fucking brain cell and is like, oh, wait, you shouldn't come. You might die. <laughs> so they get on the plane. Here, take this girl. They away. fly away. Alicia's at the airport, you know, waving at the plane. Bye, Mr. <laughs> Biscuits. I hope to see you again. He, like, flips her off. <laughs> she turns around, and the white Martian FBI guys are like, like come with us, kid. Oh, no! And she screams for help, but they use their psychic powers to make it so they're invisible. No one. Everyone in the airport doesn't know this is happening. <laughs> well, in a way, she dies. So they take her. She doesn't actually die, but she's never seen again. The plane, which is full of humans... Turns around. <laughs> no. The plane is supposed to be flying towards one place, but they're flying... So Phobos fires its freaking cannon. The moon fires its big red laser beam. No one notices. And it goes into the island, and the pilot starts flying towards the beam. Like, ah, yes, my navigation systems are fucked. Let's go over here. And Daryl's like, why is he flying towards the big red beam? And the kid in the wheelchair is like, because it's all meant to be. Don't join us <laughs> dead. <laughs> On the ground level, Mold and Pearl are arguing. Because, like, white Martians are appearing as, like, thoughts. Like, in their heads. Ooh. And the white Martian's like, you gotta jump in the hole. That'll revive Mars. You gotta jump in the hole. And Mold is like, I'll do what's right for my Martian people. And Pearl is like, I'm a person. I'm human. I don't care what you fuckers are talking about. I'm not getting in the hole. And Mold is like... Where the laser beam is? Huh? Where the laser beam is? Yeah. The laser's going into the earth. It's not like a laser that hurts. It's like jumping into the laser, you jump into the hole. Okay. Pearl is like, I'm not jumping in that hole. Mold is like, shove. And then he's like, now me. At the same time, that, you know, 447 or whatever the hell, flies into the beam... And they all form back into Martian Manhunter. No. They, they all die in the world. We cut problems. to Martian Manhunter. He, he never hit the start He's button. back. Where, where? And he's on Mars. Okay. And Mars is alive. There's a city. The Martians are alive walking around. He's like, oh, all the I did it! The green ones too? Mars for life! The green Martian Manhunter is like, I did it. Wait, I need my edgy back. Mars story. is alive and Earth will die. I serve my purpose. Wait, no, I kind of like Earth. Fuck. <laughs> he stands up and then Pearl punches him in the face. Pearl, uh, Daryl. What, they just get teleported? Mr. Biscuits and uh, Mold are all they there. They took the plane. They teleported the plane? They, they were also teleported to Mars. What happened to the plane? Did the plane just, like, go through the beam and everyone else is fine? <laughs> Listen, we'll talk about the plane in a minute, okay? Uh, so, so, wait, is it the plane from the first comic? Now he's got to go see it? <laughs> no, is no, it no, in the white cycle? White Martian lady on that plane? <laughs> no, I know you wish it was... The, it's, it's complicated, but not in that way. Okay. So, they wake up on Mars. By the way, Pearl, as she rejects that she's a Martian, starts turning into a Martian. It's not really important, but she turns into a Martian, and she starts fighting uh, John... John Jones or whatever. Jim John Jones. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, you you destroyed Earth, you're an asshole, whatever. As they're arguing with him, uh, this big battle tank shows up, like rolls in through, it's like Mad Max now. <laughs> hey, you look, everyone's alive. And Guys who died as tank drivers, man, I'm so glad we the, came back the, to this tank. The tank is being operated by humans. But they're like, again, they're like like science fiction Mad Max humans who have like, you know, armor and stuff. And this is on Mars. This is on Mars. How do they get there? And, mm -mm. The plane. <laughs> the plane. And they're being led by Alicia. The kid? She's like 30 now. What the fuck? Martian Manhunter gets to go off. Because she's like, you're the hero of the Martians. They're going to want you back. Get out of here. And it's like, good, I will. And he flies off. I, I never met you. Hmm. Who, uh, Martian Manhunter just yeah. walks off? Yeah, he goes off to meet the, the Martian people, and they're like, You were a god to us, we love you, you revived us all! Kiss my baby! And all that stuff. Shake my baby, kiss my hand. Kiss my baby, have my baby! Wanna eat a baby? Let's go! Um, so... Make my baby. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> become baby! Um, man, become baby. <laughs> the other four characters are locked up. I think Mold dies. What? Yeah, I think the I think the human rebel group just kill him because he starts he starts business with them. This is pacemaker just out. <laughs> <laughs> what, the fuck? what is this? What, what is, is this? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, at least she's on Mars. Also, <laughs> she's there. There's a tank. So humans made it here too. The other characters are in prison. What the fuck? And, so they get thrown in jail. Yeah, and Mr. Biscuits is like Alicia. 
What happened to you? And she's like, takes out chair, sits in it backwards, like like Captain America. <laughs> oh. All right, here's what happened. She's fucking. <laughs> yeah. So every she's... every question you ask, I get to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bam. Oh, are you gonna do that again? Bam. Bam. Why are you doing that? Bam. <laughs> so. Can you please stop? Bam. <laughs> Just pulls out like a ch- like a minigun. <laughs> just puts a full magazine on the table. Just, just puts a fucking box mag on it. Like, yeah. Alicia is like, okay, so you guys leave on a plane, and you leave me behind. And then I'm kidnapped by white Martians. And okay. they extract everything I know about you guys, which Seems isn't much. You problem, yeah. And then they feed me to the Martian, in- uh, uh, Martian man-eater. Okay. But it doesn't kill me. It just holds me inside of itself. 30 years? For 30 years. And, she, she, and when she escapes and gets out of it, she ends up like meeting up with a group of human rebels on Mars. The, the she was in the Martian body for like 30 years. Jesus Christ, what happened on... Yeah, no, I can't, I can't help I you. I I'm going through the stages of grief trying to process this entire comic. <laughs> so, like, it's, like, it's like anger. <laughs> Bargain. <laughs> like... So Martian Man is like, I did it. Denial. Mars is, Mars is good, or it's gonna die. That's a bummer. But uh, you know, I'm kind of conflicted about that. He also runs into a Martian child. It's like half human, and he's like abomination. No, no, no it's a little really? Martian kid, and he's like, he's messed up because this kid looks like his son. What happened to the kid in the wheelchair? <laughs> is it the kid? <laughs> he's the new no, lover. No, no, no. We'll get to that in, in just a minute, Bennett. Punches a building down. I promise it's not gonna make sense. So. Um, <laughs> He subjects us to pain, ladies and gentlemen of the so, audience. So, so this little Martian kid is like, I am Mars. I am the spirit of Mars. Martian Manhunter, you suck. What? Manhunter's like, but I brought you back to life. And he's like, yeah, you weren't supposed to, idiot. Martian Manhunter's like, oh man, this kid says I'm, I'm bad. And this kid I knows guess I'm of, bad. I, get, I, I should probably look <laughs> into this. Fuck? And that's when Malefaak attacks with his own oh rebel. My. I oh, forgot he was a thing. Yeah, because, listen, it's a city of green Martians, which means the white Martians gotta roll it and take shit over. Oh, so, Malifaak, the red guy, is in charge of the white Martians. They haven't even had a minute to, like, sit down. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's nonstop. We gotta get this book over with. Um, so, <sighs> Malifaak shows up with the white Martians, and they're, they're in these battle tanks. The battle tanks transform into giant mechs. Into like, like insert insert uh, what's that what's that movie Pacific Rim insert Pacific oh Rim God. reference here, because the the White Martians turn their war tank into a giant like Jaeger, and they're like we're gonna go punch the city we're gonna kill all the Green Martians. Malefa Ack was the kid in the wheelchair. And he was leading the characters into the city. He was like, Daryl, go here. I know stuff. He's like, what do you know? And that was, that was Malifa Act the whole time. The kid in the wheelchair was Malifa Act, the Red Martian. Oh, because he's like, I have to use Martian Manhunter. Yeah. So that's why he brought him back. I'm like, well, you just murder that. That's also why the Man Eater never like, attacked the kid in the wheelchair. Oh. Or the White Martians never tried to get him or anything. It's also why the kid in the wheelchair was somehow connected to this, but he wasn't part of Martian Manhunter. Alicia is like, well, then we'll have to fight back with our own mech. And the, the war tank turns into... It's a mech battle. We get a mech battle. And uh, they have to fight. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> and Martian Manhunter is like, I have to stop this problem. I know. I'll take over the... I'll show myself again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Clark. Uh, yeah. So, Manhunter... So you know how he can shapeshift? He goes inside of Malefaak's ship and then just spreads his body out. <laughs> well, you say it like that. It. I might leave. It. You know how, like, uh, okay, you know how Venom works. It's like Venom. 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 The alien goop goes inside person. Venom. Martian Manhunter goes inside giant robot. Becomes Manhunter robot. So Martian Manhunter becomes a giant mech. And he's like, Alicia, we don't need to fight. I now control Malefaak's ship. All the white Martians have jumped out, because otherwise they'd be all be dead. Malefaak, you fucked off too, so we're good. We don't need to fight. And it's just like, I'm mad at you too. And the robots fight. <laughs> By this point, the other Martian characters escape imprisonment. 
and they're and, like they split up. Pearl uh, helps Martian Manhunter by doing her own little like Venom trick and taking over Alicia's robot's body. <laughs> Alicia gets away as long as you know the rebels do too. Um, it's it's just that it's falling apart. <laughs> Daryl, Mister Biscuits, was this like a coke bender? <laughs> like, <laughs> so Daryl and Mister Biscuits go find that kid, the kid that was like, "I am the spirit of Mars." That kid, <laughs> they go find him. Okay, okay, and this kid is like, "Okay, we have like two issues left. I really gotta cut the chase here." Here is the new backstory for the Martian Manhunter. Ready? Here it is. Mars was dying, probably a freaking global warming thing, I don't know. Um, it was dying, and the spirit of Mars was trying to warn everyone, right? It was trying to tell the Martian people. I, I think maybe it was dying because the Martians were fighting each other, like the green and the white Martians were fighting too much. That's fair. And so the spirit of Mars tried to warn everybody, and it did this by sending out a psychic wave. But because the green and the white Martians are so obsessed with fighting each other, they didn't perceive the psychic wave as a warning. They perceived it as like a giant stupid monster. Oh, no. Be because the alternative would be someone telling them, hey, stop fighting each other. And they're like, oh, but we love fighting each other. And it's really hard to change. So instead of, instead of taking responsibility and changing how we behave, uh, we're just going to perceive this message as a giant monster we have to fight. And that's why they built the... Uh... Let's just go around the responsibility of this. Just pass the buck. Yeah, pass the buck. So, the Green Martians are like, alright, we gotta fight this giant monster, what are we, what are, any ideas? Anyone? Anyone? And Malefaak... Mexu. Malefaak, yes, I have an idea, as he walks into the room like a freaking Muppet. I'm red, for some reason. <laughs> he's like... As if I was green, I'd be like everyone else. Malefaak is like, I'm a scientist. Wouldn't they just be like, no, you're also a felon, so no. <laughs> <laughs> no, at this time he was just a scientist with dubious means. <laughs> he's just dubious. He's morally dubious, but I guess why? <laughs> His alignment is dubious. So, so Malefag is like, all right, listen. As Martian people, we can't stop the giant monster. But if we made a super Martian, we could fight the monster. And they're like, y you can do that? You can make a super Martian? He's like, yeah, I'm just going to need, like, I don't know, like 36 people. 36 virgins. <laughs> Is that and for like, the... And, like, two gas station penis pills. <laughs> I'm going to need 36 virgins. And, like, I don't know, a laser cannon. And, uh, <laughs> Un unrelated to the first two requests. <laughs> so, Malefag <laughs> is like, he's got all these Martians hooked up in tubes and stuff. Oh, no. They're going to give their lives to create one super powerful Martian. The core of this experiment is John Jones, who, for some goddamn reason, isn't a cop anymore. He's a writer. Oh, what the fuck. He's a beautiful poet. He doesn't get the urge to fight crime until... <laughs> Bennett's <laughs> walking around now. <laughs> He's gonna walk out. Bennett is... 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 wrecked. So Martian Man... So yeah, John Jones is a writer with a good heart. And they make him the core of this experiment. And... So he, he's getting fused together, and John has to like say goodbye to his family. It's real sad. As he's getting fused, he's like, goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> Remember me, son! <laughs> his face is melting in front of his family. Oh, daddy! <laughs> Don't look away, son. <laughs> Remember me! Remember me! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Before... Okay, you're gonna love this. Before Malifa X like, hits the switch to fuse all the Martians... Well, he gets like a fly. No, no. John Jones is in the tube, and he's like, Malifa X... You can, like, separate us after, right? Like, when this is over, we can all, like, separate again, right? And Malefag is like, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 YOLO! It's just... Great Martian Manhunter, and, you know, he's super powerful. He's got these fucking powers or whatever. And he's like, I'm gonna go fight that monster. And he goes off into the Martian, like, desert. And there's, <laughs> and, and there's nothing there, because there never was a monster. <coughs> he's like, I don't understand. And then the spirit of Mars shows up as, like, you know... A copy of his child. He's like, "Oh, hey, son. I thought you'd be scarred for life. What are you doing here?" And the kid's like, "Yo, I am the spirit of Mars. Uh, you guys were already disappointing me, right? With all your fighting, and then you kill off thirty other Martians. What's wrong with that? You viol You use blood magic, like forbidden magic and science. Forbidden technology. You violate the laws of nature to create a, like a super soldier weapon because you were afraid of a monster." Yeah? None of you deserve this. So he kills Mars. The spirit of Mars 
kills Mars. Commits Sudoku or whatever. Yeah, so a few white Martians managed to survive the... It was like a plague that he sent out. Oh, so, god powers. Yeah, but... so some white Martians live... Why wouldn't you take the white ones out too? That seems a little... Malafak lives... Racist. Martian Manhunter survived because he was super powerful... And then, like, oh no, he went flying off into Earth. Like he, like, in his anguish, he kind of blacked out. And when he woke up, he was on Earth in a crater. And when he wakes up, he's so traumatized and so guilty that his I... his mind makes up a new origin story. Oh. He forgets that he's a weapon made from thirty dead Martians. He forgets the history of Mars. He makes a new story in his head and joins the fucking Justice League. Now listen, I know we have a lot of characters, and it's like the last two issues. Pearl. We introduced some new characters. Um, on Earth... <laughs> Bennett with the they're, not, they're not new. Bennett will know this guy. On Earth, John Constantine just got done pounding um. some... <laughs> just got done pounding some ass. Oh, I thought you were going to say sand. No, no, no. John... <laughs> He's bags. punching a beach. <laughs> no, Fuck no. you, beach. You took my family. No, John Constantine... The, the demons. John Constantine is this... He's this... Anti-hero. He's this magic anti-hero. He smokes like a chimney. He's a really interesting character. He who... fights demons and fucks broads. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. And he smokes like a damn chimney. He's like one of my favorites. And the fact that he's in this book, I was like, no, you don't need to be here, John. You don't need to be here. And they're really, really trying to make this book series work. <laughs> they pulled Constantine So here. he looks up in this, like, he just gets done banging. And he uses, <laughs> he uses this girl's telescope to look in the sky, because the sky is turning red. He looks in the sky, you can see Mars coming towards Earth. Oh, great. And he's like, what the fuck is he gonna do? Well, his first reaction is like, the Martians. Why did no one think of the bloody Martians? So he calls up five of his fucking magic pals, and they form a magic barrier around Earth to try and prevent they Mars. They get there quick enough. Yeah, yeah. So they try to, he's still in his underwear. Hurry up, let's go. So they form a magic barrier around Earth to protect it from the falling planet of Mars. While that's happening... Martian Manhunter and Pearl, who have both, you know, possessed the bodies of giant mechs, are trying to push Mars back from Earth. <laughs> oh, that, how this works. that doesn't work. So they try to take Phobos, the moon of Mars, and shove it into that hole that it's making. Plug up the hole. Save the world. Because Daryl's trying to convince... Daryl and Mr. Biscuits are like, listen, Mr. Spirit of Mars. I think Alicia's there, too, because she's, like, changed sides now. The three of them are like... <laughs> I like how she's just like, uh, okay, I guess I'm okay now. Yeah, she forgave... You've taken like a quarter of my life span she, away She forgave me. Mr. Biscuits. Um, my parents think I'm dead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So the three of them are like... I, from the inside of this alien, saw me on a fucking milk carton, <laughs> thanks. Like... So inside the, 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 yeah, the caves of Mars or whatever, they're trying to convince the, the Martian spirit, the spirit of Mars, to not destroy Mars, to like help it live. And he's like, it's... <laughs> now nah, reset button. He's like, no, nah, it's, it's too far gone. <coughs> I like how he doesn't give a shit about Earth. He's like, I can't revive Mars, but I can undo all of the magic that went into, like, reviving it. But the, like, he, he can put everything back to the way it was. By smashing the planets together. No, not by that. By, like, he, he can reverse that, too. He mm. can reverse this whole bullshit, but it means Mars doesn't get to come back. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Okay, so he was gonna crash it to save Mars? He wasn't. Malefaak and his white Martians were. Uh. Okay. The spirit of Mars is like, I am a being of inaction. I, I am just watching all you feeble Martians muck fuck about, up, muck about and, and mess up and kill each other. I am powerless, except I am powerful. Uh -huh. I control all life force on the planet. I mean, can't do shit. he's God. He's Martian God. Okay. So they're like, hey, help us. And he's like, all right. Okay. All right, you've convinced me in like four panels. Please um, help. We're running out of pages. Okay. <laughs> Malifa Ak shows up in the cave. <laughs> He's just like... Just, he picks up... Like a Waluigi up. scream. <laughs> he takes the kid. <laughs> he he steals Alicia? He, no, no, the spirit of Mars. <laughs> I am all powerful. <laughs> he kidnaps <laughs> God. Kid stole. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Somebody I have God. I have a gun. I want $30,000. <laughs> I want 30 more Martians. I want $30,000 and a fucking car home. <laughs> Yeah, unmarked builds, no cops. With a plane to Guadalajara. Nobody look at me. <laughs> so. On a fucking bus. <laughs> he drops below 50 miles an hour, this pipe bomb's gonna go off. He's like, he's like, your spirit of Mars? My spirit of Mars. And he runs off. 
<laughs> and the, the, the other three have to chase. Nobody stops him? Well, he causes, like, a, an, like a, they're in a cave. So he, he causes a cave in. <laughs> How did he know he wasn't going to trap himself in there? <laughs> Alicia manages to escape and chase after Malefact. The cave in, and Mr. Biscuits is crushed to death by rocks. Thank fuck. <laughs> and, I mean, oh no. And Daryl is also crushed by rocks. He's like, oh no, I'm dying. I'm a beat cop from, like, Detroit or whatever. Now he's a beat up cop. Like, fuck. Like, a week ago, I, I had a conversation with my brother in the other city. He, he's not my brother. It's all in certain memories. But he's like, I'm a normal dude. I'm gonna die. And Mr. Biscuits, he's dead, right? His arm lifts up. And he does the little talking hand motion. Oh, what the fuck? And it's we're, okay. We're fine. He's like, Daryl, I'm dead. You need to get out of here. And Daryl's like, you're not dead. You're talking with your hand right now. He's like, no, I'm dead. Don't you get it? It's just you now. This man... Is you need to be a hero. You, you're not human, Daryl. Under so much stress. That Don't you get it? Is. You and I are alike. Neither of us are human. Do you understand? I like biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any biscuits? And Daryl is like, you're right. I'm not human. I just have to remember that. I do like biscuits. And listen, throughout the book, Daryl has like briefly accessed his Martian powers. Like when he punched the Martian man-eater. Um, there's a part where they're on the plane, and he has to get into the cockpit, and a bunch of uh, people try to like stop him because they're being mind controlled. Mind powers! And he's like, oh wait, I have telepathy. And so he just runs into the room, puts out his hands, and goes, everyone hit the wall! And they all... Vroom. Like, to use telepathy, he has to be like... Uh, I want everyone to hit the wall, and they all do. Why wouldn't you just whip out an FBI badge and be like, I'm commandeering this plane? Yeah, they're mind-controlled. Mind-controlled oh. people don't respect authority. Just like people that aren't mind-controlled. People that so, like ICP, <laughs> also. If you like ICP, you also don't respect authority. So Daryl is like, I'm not human, and so he uses Martian strength to get out of the fucking boulders. Uh. And he, he moves the boulder off Mr. Biscuits. He's like, all right, Mr. Biscuits, let's go. And he's yeah, like, Mr. Biscuits is Mr. Pain. Mr. Biscuits is like, no, no, I'm actually dead. Anyway, bye. <laughs> His hand. He's like, nah, uh, uh, and it's like a close up of the hand dying. <laughs> Malefag. <laughs> Good. Uh, Malefag is like, all right, kid. All right, Spirit of Mars. He's like shaking the kid. He's like, listen to me. Listen, you're God. Giving this kid trauma. Listen, you're kid. You're God, right? I want you to remake Mars and make it in my image. I want to be God. Go on, do it. Come on, do it. Slapping the shit out of him. Stupid kid. Yeah. And Malefag, Stupid bald headed child. Malefag is like strangling this kid. Big ass forehead and he's, god powers. And he's throttling Alicia with his other arm. He's, he's double fisting <laughs> strangulations. He's like, ah! I want power. I want to win. Fuck it. This is a deal at Denny's right now. Two for one. <laughs> Malefag Strangulation. Is, yeah, no, internally, Malefag is like, Lex Luthor has started like four different supervillain teams and I've never gotten an invite. I need a win. <laughs> That's how I get it. This is how I win. And he's stabbed in the back. He's like hit with a big rock by Daryl. <laughs> Instead of super punching him, he's like, rock. <laughs> and Malefak is like, Daryl, don't. Don't. Re remember who you are. And Daryl's like, I'm a cop. And then he kills him with a boulder. <laughs> Daryl, remember who you are. That's right. I do remember who I am. There's no <laughs> body cams on Mars. There's a pizza to death. And then Daryl's like, Alicia, I'm dying now. What? <coughs> I, I, the boulders hit me from the cave-in, and Malefag cut me up a few times. Why? He just did, what do you mean he cut him a couple times? He's dying. Don't you get it? The cop man is dying? The cop man is dying. Can't, can't be prosecuted if I die. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Alicia gets to live, and the Martian god is like, all right, I'm going to reverse everything. So Mars will be dead, Earth will be fine. The Martian god is a bitch. And the Martian god... Martian you lord like, over nothing except an empty, cold tomb of Martian God is like, sadness. Alicia, I'm sorry all this happened to you. It kind of has nothing to do with you, so I can just send you back to Earth. She's like, nah. And when I send you back, you'll be like a kid again. Nah. I'd and like, like no. none of this will have happened. You'll forget about everything. Like, no. You'll just be a kid. What'd she say? She's like, yes. I'd be like, it's dumb. Living is hell. Send me back. <laughs> Martian, the Martian God reverses everything. Okay. What happens to the Martian God? Does he die? We're going to see what happens to him. Okay, what the fuck is he a god of? There's nothing left. <laughs> the Martian Manhunter, who is a big robot man, yeah. and Pearl, who is also a big robot, they make it down to Earth. Okay. They close the portal with the moon of Phobos. Oh, okay. And then, how do they know how, that's, how that works? They just guess? So they're flying towards Earth. They study. And they, don't, they crash, right? <laughs> they crash into Phobos. They crash into the Earth. The hole's done. The fuck Mars is a dead planet over there now. Oh, cool. So everything's been fixed. And it's book's done. Both mechs hit the beach, fall apart. Manhood crawls out. Pearl crawls out of hers. And he's like, 
But where are all the Martians? I thought we brought them with us. Where are they? And out of the wreckage of the um, the mechs are a all... A Martian appears. No, are all the passengers of the plane that flew into the beam. What the fuck? Some of them became the human rebels that were part of Alicia's team. Oh, really? And some of them thought they were Martians. Oh. So they're back on Earth and they're alive. So you remember how I said, here's the big twist... What do you what do you mean? What do you mean? And, and then when you know the robot showed up, I was like, I was like, here's where it kind of went off the bed, the blood magic. Like we've been through several twists and turns that have made me nauseous, but yes. <laughs> oh man, I hope you're as ready I for don't this. I think we'll be able to drive I home. Hope, and now there's a Jesus robot again. <laughs> I hope you're as ready for this it's as I Jesus. as ready for this as I wasn't. Okay. He starts like trying to make sense of everything that happened. Okay. And he's like, I'm I'm like in perfect condition. And there's no Martians here. And he looks at Mars, and Mars is regular in the sky. Yeah. And he's like, I guess Martian God reversed everything, and the blood magic didn't work, and the world is fine, and I, and I fixed it. Well, if the it. blood magic didn't work, he wouldn't exist. Yeah, well, okay, here's, here's the thing. He's like, but he, he's like, he knows everything that happened, but then he's like, but then why did this, like, he's pointing out plot holes in this entire story. Oh, like, my. everything he's been through, he's like, but why did this happen? And why was this like this? And how did this character know about this over here? And he's starting... And it cuts to a panel of, I am of the... him reading the Martian. <laughs> this is bullshit. Wait, I'm the, wait, I'm the spirit of Mars. <laughs> so he's like, why is all this stuff happening? And then he sees Mold. And then Daryl. And then Mr. Biscuit. And then the Martian Oh, child. no, he lived. Oh, my God. Like, he sees all these characters that we've met throughout the book. And he sees Malifa Ak. And Malifa Ak is like... You did it, Manhunter. You saved the world. Like, you, you're a hero. You did exactly what you wanted to do. He's in a matrix, isn't he? This isn't a real... No, this isn't no. real. No, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna cut to... I'm not gonna fucking fluff it anymore. Okay. From the beginning to the story, with the plane, like, blowing up and crashing, to now when Manhunter gets he back to Earth... He was napping. It was all in his head. <laughs> don't. Don't leave. <laughs> don't leave me. <laughs> me getting it. Baby, baby, I can change. Oh, uh, sorry. It was all in his head. The alternate personalities. The new revived Mars. The, the spirit of Mars. Malefa Act. The giant robots. I feel, like, I feel like they wrote this book without the ending. They're like, fuck, we need an ending. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. What do we do? Uh, I feel like they, oh. if I bought these comics and finished the story like that, I would be like, this motherfucker stole my money. No, I... <laughs> it really... It really <laughs> like my money. It really feels like another writer came into the room and was like, hey... I'm going to do a, a new Martian Manhunter origin in the Justice League book. And he's like, but I'm already doing a new origin for him. I'm like, oh, just put it back the way it was. Okay, bye. So His brother, the writer's brother comes in. Yeah, you're I'm fired. <laughs> you're fired. I'm hired. Get this guy out of here. Get this guy out of here. Take his shoes. Um, so it was all in Manhunter's head. Rob him for his foams. Take his shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Pearl walks up to him, and Pearl's like, no, they're wrong, John. I'm human. I'm a real person. I'm not just part of you. And Manhunter's like, Pearl, yeah. Pearl, I'm sorry. And he absorbs her into... And she's like, John, no! <coughs> Wait, Martian Manhunter just absorbs her? Yep. She's like, I'm a real person, it's true. And Wait, he's like, if it's all in his head... And he's like, no. Why does he, why does he some, absorb her? Some parts are solid. That doesn't make sense. So he absorbs her. It's like it's like all the human elements. Like the white Martians, Malafak, the characters that he split himself into. Those were all real... Those were all parts of him. But all the bits oh. about they go to Mars, there's a laser beam, Alicia. Oh, so the evil guy's part of him? Alicia never went to Mars. Oh. She stayed in the airport. Oh. Never was taken or anything. Oh. The Alicia that met on Mars, that part was in his head. Like, everything that's on Earth is all physical parts of him. Everything that's off Earth is all in his head. He, so does he just have to reabsorb all the characters he made by accident? Connor, Connor he's not even 30 Martians fused into one dude. He's just the last Martian. And his trauma made up this hero story for him, where he thought by the end of it, he could feel like the big hero and like, you know, the, the, the one who sacrifices everything to do the right thing. So he could feel that way. The truth is, he's just sad, alone, and the last of his kind. Good. And he's insane. <laughs> Good. He's a goddamn crazy person. Good. Fuck. He better, who, who, he better it, be insane. Within this context, knowing what the New 52 had done to the character, he does not belong in the Justice League. Good thing he's alone and insane. No sane person could have invented <laughs> Mr. Biscuits. No. So, that man better not exist. <laughs> Let's get into the story, right? And I swear, no one talks about the story. 
No one, no one references Because it never happens, Raffi. The next... <laughs> It was on your head, Rafi. The you guys aren't even here. Rafi, you didn't even invite us here for a comic thing. We just came here to eat back. Yeah. This book's like a we real left. Fucking <laughs> we left like an hour and a half ago. Like, we were not I, here anymore. I like blink and we're all playing Mario Party. Like, what? What, what the fuck? And you're, you're like, Raph, what's wrong? It's just, uh, nothing. For a while, I was, I was on the book and I was interested. Like, okay, there's this, there's this Martian, like, uh, what's the word? Um, conspiracy. There's, you know, white Martians that are hiding on Earth. <clears throat> Manhunter dies, but there's, like, other versions of him running on Earth. I was like, that's all really cool. That's all within what Manhunter can do in, in terms of his powers. And then when they're like, blood magic, on Mars, Alicia's 30 years older, time has passed. Uh, and I'm like, ho, 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 hold robots. on. Robots. <laughs> yeah, Martian <laughs> God, robots. robots. <laughs> As always, uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, follow us on YouTube to get more episodes like this. I'm stunned. I don't know what to say. You should put a list out and be like, these are the episodes you might not want to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Do not do not research. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Also don't look don't look up Martian Manhunter fan fiction. <laughs> it is it is a mistake. Thank you all for listening and we'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.